critical mission of bombing the capital city of Baghdad fell to the Air Force's secret weapon, the F-117 Stealth Fighter. The Stealth Fighter's unique shape deflected radar waves, making the plane difficult for the enemy to see and shoot down. It was the only plane that stood a chance of getting through Baghdad's air defenses, but it had yet to be tested in a major battle. For General Chuck Horner, the commander of the Coalition Air Force, using the 117s was a dangerous but necessary gamble. Now, we knew from our experiments and our measurements that stealth worked. And we'd never really done it before. And I thought to myself, what am I the, what if I'm the first general that loses every entire stealth airplane in the opening moments of the war? From a bomb-proof bunker in Saudi Arabia, Horner, Schwarzkopf, and the air campaign staff set the war in motion. When you start a war, you're filled with a sense of dread because you know you're about to embark on the taking of human life and losing lives on your side. We were well trained. We had the absolute best technology that anybody's ever had. We had planned as methodically and as carefully as we could. We were using an awesome amount of power and we were dictating the terms and we were on the offense. We were not in any way, there wasn't a defensive thought in our mind. At midnight, 10 stealth fighters roared out of their secret base in Saudi Arabia and began the two-hour flight to Iraq. From the sea, Tomahawk cruise missiles shot out of their cages. Together with the stealth fighters, they were set to destroy power plants, command buildings, and communication networks. This was phase one of the master plan, taking out the head. Meanwhile, the sky filled with 700 planes drawn from the air forces of America, Britain, France, and Saudi Arabia. At approximately 3 a.m., they would attack targets across Iraq in the largest airstrike in history. The most stunning visual I remember was looking over the air traffic plant, what it was going to look like over Saudi Arabia and throughout the Persian Gulf. And it looked like O'Hare on a Friday night in a thunderstorm. Um, it was the most incredible air traffic plan you've ever seen. When you have 500 to 1,000 moving objects involved in the first one to three hours in an air campaign, the opportunity for something to go wrong is just astronomical. Mid-air collisions were a danger, but the Air Force was even more concerned with Iraq's anti-aircraft artillery and surface-to-air missiles. It was estimated that anywhere from two to 20% of coalition aircraft would be shot down the first night. If the stealth fighters made it past the border unharmed and hit their targets on schedule, Iraq's air defense system would be severely handicapped. The risks for other coalition pilots would be drastically reduced. The planners feared that when the 117s bombed Baghdad, it might trigger an automatic launch of Scud missiles in Western Iraq. To stop this from happening, two radar outposts on the Iraqi border had to be eliminated before the mass bombing began. Destroying the outposts would create a blind spot, enabling F-15E fighter bombers to fly into Iraq and hit the Scud sites. The job of destroying the outposts was given to a task force of heavily armed Apache attack helicopters. Special operations choppers flew alongside to spot targets and jam enemy transmissions. Pilots flew in low to avoid being spotted by radar. They navigated using night vision goggles, one of the many technological advantages the Coalition had over their opponents. At precisely 2.38 a.m., the Apaches fired off a round of Hellfire missiles, and Operation Desert Storm began. Got it. Good. Got the number one target. Excellent. The darkness of the desert being so complete, the flash of an explosion lit up everything. You know, one flash after another after another as the radar site blew up. And they fired their rockets and their 30 millimeter gun into the radar site to ensure that it was eradicated. And it was like fireworks. As the Apache struck the radar post, the first wave of stealth fighters reached the city of Baghdad. Mm -hmm. 
All the street lights were on. You could see the main thoroughfares, you know, the roundabouts and stuff that they had in there. And then, about 10 minutes or so before our attack run started, there was starting to be some sporadic AAA fire up in the air. They didn't see anything on the radars, so they just started with these red fire hose, if you will, just laying down fire everywhere. Stealth technology confused Iraq's radar-guided surface-to-air missiles, but the sheer number of shells anti-aircraft artillery fired into the sky was daunting. I don't think any of us were prepared for the volume of AAA fire that came out of that city that night. It was uh, truly incredible. You know, in the airplane, it was quiet, and you just saw a lot of the stuff. You started living your life, so to speak, in small increments. You know, after you see all this stuff coming up all around you and everything, you start saying, okay, just let me get there to release the bomb. You know, and then after the bomb left, you said, okay, just let me keep guiding the bomb till it impacts. And then after the bomb impacts, you say, okay, now just let me get the hell out of here. Each 117 carried two smart bombs that followed laser beams to their targets. These precision weapons were the only bombs the Allies dared use in the heavily populated city. Their first strike destroyed Iraqi Air Force communications, throwing them into chaos. It's like it stuck a stick in a hornet's nest now, after the bombs exploded. The reaction of seven of us was pretty universal and holy mackerel i don't know how how we were supposed to get through that the stealth fighters completed their bombing run in three minutes then they raced back to the safety of the saudi border i remember i counted five and i thought oh my god we lost one you know and i'm flying this whole way thinking i wonder who it was you know we lost one you know and then finally it dawned on me that i was the number six guy that's why i didn't count uh, but then once I got up on the tanker and I said, hey, how many showed up in the other track? And he goes, all four of them are there. And that was just the icing on the cake. Now that the stealth fighters had severed Baghdad's links to the field, hundreds of airplanes hit key targets across Iraq. Their bombs fell on airfields, scud missile sites, chemical weapons facilities, and troops in the field. Splash. Good. Not Marvelous. Really. Marvelous. Splash. Looking good. That was an excellent splash. Oh, 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 red smoke. Right in there. Oh, man. Short. Out of the hundreds of airplanes flying the first night, only one was lost. This was good news for the coalition, but for Iraqi soldiers, it was the beginning of a long nightmare. 